video, we're going to introduce to you the heat injector system that's designed to kill bed bugs with heat. In this, in this system, basically the air will be drawn in through this air intake on the top of here, heated, and then discharged through flexible duct connected with uh, fabric duct or fabric cinches that will actually shoot the air down through any one of these ports. You can actually control how much air goes down each one of them by restriction on any one of the heads of these things. In this, in this layout, we're going to have a Y3. We're actually going to have a duct shooting that way to heat the couch, one around this way to heat the kitchen, and a third one will be actually focused on this chair. These other two duct works are going to heat the other back bedrooms. As we see these going down through here, each one of these are 25 foot lengths of, of flexible duct. When, when they get pressurized, in other words, the industrial blower and the heat injector is going to push air down through these ducts. <clears throat> and when they get pressurized, they're going to try to expand to their maximum length. After we actually, after we have the first 25 foot, then we'll actually, then we'll connect the first to the second one. So you'll see a couple of duct to duct connectors there. These are duct stands that we install where they where the space gets to be limited so that we can actually put two of these 16 inch ducts on top of each other. As it comes down through here these now are on the second 25 foot length. So this next one we had to consolidate it into a very short length here so we actually then we use this piece here to consolidated in the middle of this. So the 25 foot length duct turns out to be only 10. We don't have to cut them. And then now we're going to have another um, Y. And this Y is actually going to split off and go into two 16 inch ducts. 16 inch duct for bedroom one, bedroom two. And then bedroom three, we're going to run the other one directly from the machine and in this one, we're going to actually, then we're going to split it nut. We're going to have another Y down here because there's a large closet. We want to heat the closet and then we'll shoot the other one to the farthest point in the room. When you see it in operation, you'll notice that the air that goes into each one of these rooms has to come back out. And, bas and basically what the air will do is it'll carry a BTU energy when it goes down this duct, it will release that energy and heat the space in there, every content and all that. And then the airflow that is coming out of the room, we put the doorway drapes on there to make the air that leaves the room the coldest air. Now we'll go turn this on and we'll see it flow with um, heat and airflow. <clears throat> when, when the... Uh, when the airflow goes up, you'll actually, you'll, you'll see this thing that we call DC-90 here. Those little ports will, will start to push air, heated air, underneath the couch. It's nine inches long, so that it pretty much would heat any couch. It also is designed for baseboards. When we want to try to do baseboards and you want to try to inject the heat in the room and concentrate it in a specific spot. Now we'll kind of go out here to see what we actually what we have out here. This this is a propane tank. We act, we have it hooked on to a propane tank so that we just drop the hose down over the edge there. So so that now we have power to it. We have a white light on here that indicates that there is power is plugged into electrical outlet on the inside of the house. In order to operate it, we actually you just have to turn on the airflow, and then after, and you turn on the heat. The heat is actually, it's interlocked to the airflow, so you can't make a mistake. After it goes through a process of checking a whole bunch of safety things, it will actually go over and start it, and it will turn it, see a green light come on. If it doesn't start the first time, the red light will come on, and then you'll have to go through a reset, because it may have been some air in the line. You'll see that it's turned on now, it's set for 140. We'll turn the airflow up, and let's go see what we got going in here. This is now with airflow. And 
you can you can see the air the heated the air is heated with the burner here it doesn't create any hot spots nothing on this burner the couch and it makes the air flow makes the openings so that the air flow would push out underneath the couch. Now when we look into each one of the rooms you'll get a good idea of what and how the thermal heat is transferred. Each one of these rooms now each one of these rooms now are starting to billow the air out. So as the air goes into each one of these rooms the air flow that's coming out of the room is going to come out of the lower part of the room. And now we just let it run like this until the return air temperature, once the heat cannot dissipate in anything more into those rooms, everything in that room will start to be heated. Everything on this whole space on the way back to the air intake will all be heated. That whole room out there will all be heated as all of this air flows out and it can no longer uh, absorb any of the heat that's being put into the rooms. The residual heat that is not absorbed in those rooms will actually go out, and that's why we go, that's why we measure the return air temperature on the air intake. As that return temperature gets warmer and warmer and warmer, it's pretty much saying that nothing in that house is anything colder than the temperature that return air at that point in time we'll pressurize it we'll show you how to do that now once your space gets up to temperature and you can tell by the return air temperature in this one for testing we aren't doing it exactly at the right time but when it gets up to about 125 degrees then you'd want to start to pressurize it what i'm showing here is some tinsel that would end up indicate airflow when, when we pressurize it, you'll see an increased amount of airflow from the outside, less from the inside. So this amount of airflow would start to try to push through the cracks and crevices in the heated space. First, what we'll do is we'll open a door that will start to pull additional airflow. And you'll start to see some additional airflow starting to move. And then we'll drop a damper. When we drop this damper, what that does is that pulls more air from the outside, and that air flow, air flow that it pulls from the outside is going to push heated air through the cracks, crevices, electrical outlets, phone connections, any kind of opening that's in the space. And the temperature in the space is going to be greater than what the temperature is for the bed bugs to live in. So about the last hour of the heat treatment, we suggest that this is where you would start to pressurize it to start to pull this additional amount of airflow into your space. And it would actually uh, force the heat through any openings in the space to thoroughly heat your structure. So this is why, one of the reasons why the heat injector system is so effective killing that noise. 